love with people that just want to experience his presence and tell him how great he is. We're so thankful that we get to sing into people's lives the truth of the gospel. And we're so, so honored that you guys would come here. We don't take one moment, one minute of your time lightly. It's like the hugest, craziest blessing. Me and Brandon keep talking about behind the scenes. Um, how like we, we, we still feel like these 15 year old kids leading worship in youth group and like what in the world are these people doing showing up and so this is just amazing and huge. Is anybody else really sweaty already like me? So it doesn't even matter. We're all sweaty. We're all gonna stink together. So now you can just go ahead worship as hard as you want to, okay? Yeah. I'm pretty excited about leading this song because uh, this next song is, um, it was birthed in this city. Yeah! yeah. It changed my life. That's right. It's crazy how God gives you songs in the middle of a season or before even a season you're, you're headed into yes. as a country, yes. as a world. And man, so many uh, situations that quite literally or seemingly look like death. But how many, how many of you know our God specializes in resurrection? There's nothing you can do. So since this is a song of this city, I need y'all to sing it with all the Chris Stapleton you got in your voice every minute. I need y'all to sing it like you own this song, all right?
The cross is spoken, we are forgiven, the blood is shed, we are saved. It does not mean we don't go through our share of battles. That's right. Now this song came from a, one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament. I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. But it was one of those moments where the people of God were facing an enemy way too great. The people of God were so outnumbered, it's like 100 to 1. They were surely all going to die if God did not do something. And God came with a promise. He said, today, you will not have to fight in this battle. Stand firm and hold your position in faith. And you will see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. What a promise to give. But you know what? It was just a promise when they got it. There's a, there's a giant cloud of dust being kicked up by hundreds of thousands of horses and chariots and footmen still coming their way. And so the promise, when a promise is given in those moments, the promise is only as good as the one who gives it, right? And so they thought back, this is the God who he, he tore down the walls of Jericho. This is the God who opened the Red Sea, so we're going to trust Him. It's one of these beautiful moments in Scripture where they trust Him. And so instead of sending out their military to the front line, they said, God has said we're not going to fight, so we're going to do something different. We're going to worship and they did this crazy thing that would be crazy to any military, any, mass, any nation, any leader of a government. They would think you're crazy. But what they did, they sent their worship leaders out to the front lines. You guys, if you want to send me out to the front line of a battle, you're going to lose the battle. And like a worship leader like me, you know, I'm like five foot something and I'm going to die. But they, they said, if, 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 we're going to send out our worship leaders to the front lines as if they're walking into the holy, holy places. So they dressed up like they were going into the temple and they walked out there. And even the song they sang, even the song they sang in the moment blows my mind, the faith that they had. I would have made up a song. Brandon and I would have made up a song really fast. Like, you better turn around and my God's going to kill you with the thunderbolt or something like that. You know what I mean? But they say glory to God for his steadfast love endures forever. And in the face of the enemy, face of the darkness. Glory to God for His steadfast love and nurse forever. Not their eyes on the battle, but their eyes on the one who they know is bigger than the battle. I just think it's amazing. And as they start to worship into the darkness, that enemy was thwarted and that darkness was defeated and God fulfilled His promise. And I say all that to say, God is the God who wins battles. God is the God who fights for His people. And is there anybody here in the beginning of the night Anybody who came in here with a heavy heart, or you're going through something tough right now, you're seeing a battle, you're seeing a mountain, you're seeing a wall in front of you, you've been praying, and God, you're like, God, where are you? We are a family in this place, we just want to pray for you, we want to sing over you, we want freedom in this place, we want breakthrough. Anybody with you just say, I'm in a battle right now, physically, emotionally, I see, man, it was crazy how many hands are going up. Thank you so much. Everybody, keep them up for a second, and all the church people around you, look at them. We're going to sing, we're going to pray over them, okay? And so for all of these people with their hands up, God, I pray that you would bring deliverance and breakthrough, Lord, that they would see you in their lives move in such a powerful way, Lord, that you would use the battle to turn graves into gardens for your glory and your honor. And we're going to worship, okay? There's this amazing story where, the, where these people are lowered through the roof, right, into Jesus. And God sees the faith of his friends, and the faith of his friends makes Jesus friends is going to make you well today. And so we're going to sing as one people, preaching over this moment, okay? When I fight, I fight on my knees. For those of you without your hands up, can you sing as loud as you can with these ones with their hands up? When I fight, I'll fight on my knees. 